good morning uh, today we are discussing about the topic uh, design steps for gantry gutter and also a model problem so design step uh, before going to this video please watch the previous video and previous lecture for the design steps of the gantry gutter first we have to find the uh, calculation of maximum wheel load so the maximum wheel load is, is obtained by the crane and its capacity which is very near to the gantry gutter so which uh, distance is the crane approach distance so with uh, up to this distance we can apply the crane up, before uh, after this point we cannot place the crane so this is the maximum approach distance so, so with this point we can uh, place the maximum wheel load so with this we can find the ra and rp rp okay after finding of the calculation of the maximum wheel load we have to find the calculation of the maximum bending moment so already every, everybody know this maximum bending moment is obtained by providing the load system at the exactly at the center okay so this is the one more important point so for this point so to, we have two wheel loads so for this two wheel loads we have to provide the uh, at the center of the gantry gutter with their centroid of the one by fourth of its distance okay this is the uh, this is the condition to get the maximum bending moment for the maximum shear force the maximum shear force to provide the um, in order to find the maximum shear force we have to place the wheel loads at the uh, at the supports only okay so the, with this condition we can find the maximum shear force after this after these steps we have to find the plastic section modest requirement so uh, i am repeating simply say that so in order to choose the section in order to choose the section in order to find the a uh, section of a gantry gutter first we need to find the plastic section modulus with this plastic section modulus we have to find the which section is suitable for the required plastic section modulus after the uh, after the finding of the plastic section modulus requirement we can choose the section for uh, plastic section modulus requirement we have to find the bending moment so with this bending moment uh, in the above second, second step we can find the bending moment and also we can find the shear force so with this value we can find the plastic section modulus and we can go to the these following steps after uh, uh, section uh, chosen we have to find the plastic section modulus and elastic section modulus after calculation of the elastic section and modulus and plastic section modulus we have to go for the design of the check for moment capacity that is mdj mdy we have to find the uh, these values and after the check for moment capacity yeah, mz by mdz plus md my mdy it should be less than or equal to 1 so we have to find the check for moment capacity if it is more than 1 we have to choose the re again the choose the section above the plastic section modulus requirement of the value so after the next we have to find the shear capacity web buckling check for deflection so these are formulas are which should be uh, available in the code book but check for deflection is not available in the code book so you should remember this value because of the two point loads at the center what what is the deflection at the center you have to remember this value and also design of connection so design of connection is required due to the both i and channel section we are uh, constantly considered as a gantry cutter so in order to uh, fixity we have to provide the here uh, welding and here also welding for this we have to find the shear capacity of the weld so after this shear uh, design shear strength of the weld we have to uh, design okay next for check for buckling resistance so this with this value the with this uh, steps the design of gantry cutter problem is completed so so for this example i will give you an example of the design of gantry cutter so this is a electrically operated crane so design a gantry cutter for electrically operated crane and also sometimes they are asking that manually operated crane also so the following uh, details are in the problem so crane capacity is 150 kilonewtons weight of the crane and the self weight of the crane without uh, trolley so self weight of the crane is 100 kilonewtons weight of the crane only the crane which is moving along this gutter that weight is only 40 kilonewtons and the span of the crane so this is the crane gutter the crane gutter of the length of the span is 12 meters and the span of the gantry gutter so that means this this portion this is the gantry gutter so this length in this z direction or in this uh, uh, third dimension the it is 7 meters so maximum load approach is 1 meter so because so th there is a tapered portion that is a due to uh, due to the no obstruction to the gantry gutter and no failure of the gantry gutter so this trail is maximum up to this distance the crane uh, the crane will be go after this distance it not go to this there so this is the maximum load approach is 1 meter only so wheel base th that means uh, here um, in this direction in the vertical uh, the plan direction we will show the uh, wheels that wheel distance we have this time this uh, in, in this direction we have two wheel bases and uh, 
opposite direction we have also two wheel bases go in wheel bases we have the distance is 3 meters okay so what are the design steps we are considered first we have to find the calculation of the maximum static wheel load so maximum static wheel load so maximum static wheel load we have two loads that is that is the self weight of the uh, gutter this is fixed one and we have the another weight this is uh, trolley or we can crane so this crane weight is moving along this direction so this load is separated and this is the self weight and gutter that is given as 100 kilonewtons only okay per total weight but not per meter so this is self weight of the crane per uh, total weight of the span so that is 12 meters the self weight of the crane is 100 kilonewtons only so first we have to find the trolley of uh, weight so that is the so crane capacity is 150 kilonewtons so it maximum weight it can be lifted by this uh, trolley is 150 kilonewtons and its weight of the crane is 40 kilonewtons so these are uh, moving load like it is a static point load this is moves which are along the direction so this is the so 150 plus 40 190 into its uh, this problem all are as a service loads only so for this service load we have to find the contract this uh, loads we have to add the factor of safety then we can obtain the factored loads okay this is the factor loads so at the end of the problem you can uh, after the wheel load you have to apply the uh, factor of safety or it may at the uh, starting we have to apply the loads okay whichever is useful for you okay so at the starting we have to apply the factor load or the end of the reaction or the end of the wheel load we have to apply the at the factor of safety so which one is better okay choose yourself okay so this is the steps i will use the uh, at the uh, loads only so uh, i need to uh, add the factor of safety at the wheel load okay this is the factor load and also this is a uh, self weight of the crane so the self weight of the crane is 100 kilonewtons for the total weight of the total span of the gutter so in order to find the for the per meter so we have to divide it by its crane uh, span is 12 meters so therefore 12 meters into again its factor if this is service load we have to multiply it with 1.5 to create the factor load that is 12.5 kilonewton per meter so this is udl so so the uh, realistic diagram and simply supported diagram so this is a one type of uh, it is a crane gutter so this is a uh, support here the crane gutter and here also crane gutter so we have to find the maximum uh, wheel load uh, uh, applied on this crane gutter so that why we have to uh, provide this uh, trolley at the nearest to this anti gutter so this is the maximum crane approach after this the crane it does not move in this uh, direction because of this obstruction so so the maximum approach of this uh, udl uh, that is uh, concentrator load is 285 and its approach distance is maximum is 1 meter only so we get the maximum wheel load is providing this total weight is at the support but we have the obstruction to the maximum crane approach is 1 meter so we have to fix the uh, we have the restriction to the point load is placed on this point to 1 meter only so with this condition we can find the moment about a and moment about b we can find the ra and rb so so taking moment about a is equal to 0 then ra is force into perpendicular distance so there is no perpendicular distance at this point therefore ra into 0 and force into perpendicular distance rb into 12 and 285 into 1 and it's a self weight of the uh, crane gutter is 12.5 so 12.5 into w into l square by 2 so with this value we can find the rb value and also ra value so in both these values which one is higher so ra value is higher so with this we have to take the maximum the worst condition and the maximum load which i have taken so which will be useful for the safety so therefore ra and rb two values but we have to take only maximum value so therefore i check i choose an ra value so but this total load is uh, distributed on this uh, gutter is with two wheels in this side and two wheels in this side so the total ra will be share the maximum wheel load on the ra is will be so two wheel loads we have to divide its value by two so that is 168.12 if we not taken as a if it generally taken as a service load we have to apply in this place 1.5 into so that way we will get the factored wheel load okay so this is the step for maximum wheel load next we have to find the
calculation of the maximum bending moment so for calculation of the maximum bending moment so uh, detailedly we have two types of bending moments we have to find the longitudinal bending moment and lateral bending moment first we have to find the longitudinal bending moment these steps are for the longitudinal bending moment so in order to find the longitudinal bending moment we have to three uh, steps we have to follow the first one is dead load of the gantry rail of the bending moment and bed, bed moment due to live load and bending moment due to impact load so with these three values we can find the total bending moment so therefore so therefore first we have to find the dead load of the gantry and rail so if you observe so we have the gantry and uh, and it's above the gantry we have the rail section okay already previously our class i was discussing so we, uh, gantry have the weight is 2 kilo per meter and it's above the gantry we have the rail section so total dead load of the gantry rail is 2.3 kilo so this is again also this is a service load we have to apply this into factor of safety when we can get the factor dead load that is 3.45 kilo per meter so this is per meter so we have to find the maximum bending moment due to dead load of a crane cutter is cd so this is a this is ab and this is cd so this cd is a crane cutter so this total udl is 3.45 so we have to find the maximum bending moment due to dead load at the center is will be the double l square by 8 so therefore w into l square the length of the span for the gantry cutter is 7 meter crane cutter is 12 meters but we have to find the finding this in this place is only for the gantry so therefore double l square by 8 so 21.13 again we can find the bending moment due to live load or concentrated load so the maximum bending moment due to live load that means that we have two wheels which are uh, placed on the gantry cutter at the center but uh, for the maximum bending moment we have to place the uh, you, uh, you know, wheel load at the center but we have two wheel loads okay for these two wheel loads we have to provide this at the center of the crane cutter at the 1 by 4th of this centroid of this distance so or we can already have the a uh, clear value with the, which are already know the in sa so or uh, already clearly mentioned that so this is the resultant force the resultant force and the nearest to point load the distance is the center distance with this center distance we have to place the exactly at the center to this center of the gantry cutter so that's why so uh, actually this is 3 meters this is 1.5 1.5 plus 0.75 therefore 2.25 so therefore 0.75 okay i am again repeating you so the uh, the maximum bending moment is obtained by the exactly center of the point load so but you have two point loads which two point loads having the center distance is 1.5 so with the center distance which i have to provide at the center of the centroid of the distance so that is 1.5 by 2 so therefore 0.75 or simply you can say that the wheel base by 4 the whatever the wheel base is say they uh, that distance by 4 we can get the 0.75 meter so that is the center distance to the point load is the 0.75 meter okay with this value you can also find the this is the position to get the maximum bending moment so with this position you can find the maximum bending moment with respect to bending moment at c is equal to 0 and bending moment d is equal to 0 so up, uh, or we can sum, sum, simply how summation of force is equal to 0 or summation of downward force is equal to 0 we can find the r a and r c with this value which you can observe this r d is 132 kN and r c is 204.24 so which one is highest value so we can find the so take the value so first we have to find the bending moment at e okay the maximum bending moment which i have taken for the best one so uh, if we take in the bending moment at e so th therefore so we have only rc into perpendicular distance so rc with this uh, distance is 1.25 so rc value 204.24 into 1.25 we can get the bend moment at e is 255.3 and also bend moment at f okay bend moment at f is 132 into 2. so this is a maximum bend moment okay so some test books and some materials and some videos that daily that are Uh, directly get the only rc or rd i will clearly in the mention that so which one value is taken and which one value is taken as a bending moment we get the maximum bending moment is the simplest thing so this is the so with this so if we take rd value as the lowest value you can find the bending moment we will get the whatever that we get this le, uh, less value but here we get the higher value okay so this is the position next one we have, we have to find the bending moment due to impact load so because of the impact load why because we have to add the impact load because the crane cutter is moves along the long tunnel direction or transverse direction whenever the uh, sudden application of the brakes of the crane cutter so there may, may be a uh, application of the drag force 
so we, in order to counteract the drag force or any uh, to, to impact so we have to add this load also to the bending moment so that is 25% of the maximum static wheel load of the so is the so therefore so 25% of the maximum bending moment of the wheel load or live load so 25% of the this live load so that is is the 90.75 so for this values you can also having the code book is 875 part 2 so in this value what for vertical loads for electrically oriented currents so there is a 25% of the maximum static loads where for a hand operated current operated currents there is a 10% only okay so already i mentioned the, in this material also 10% for manual operated currents that is okay so therefore total bend moment is obtained by combine uh, Uh, addition of the dead load, live load, and impact load. So by constructively we can find the bend moment. So this is the maximum bend moment in the z direction. That is long tunnel moment. So okay, this is the long tunnel bend moment. We have to find the lateral bend moment also. So uh, the lateral bend moment also we can find the so lateral bend moment. Uh, this is the lateral bend moment. So in order to find the lateral bend moment, we have to find the lateral force. Okay. So the lateral force is ten percent of the weight of the crane of the capacity. So here also that is the here if you see this so for horizontal forces we have to take the is 875 part 2 so the 10% of the weight of the crab okay weight of the crab and the weight of the lifted by the crane so this is the for vertically this and it is for um, electrically oriented cranes the horizontal force for electrically oriented cranes is 10% uh, otherwise for the uh, Uh, manually operated cranes that is for five percent only. So for the for this, I have only taken for electrical operated cranes that is ten percent of the weight of the crane and weight of the crane capacity. So forty plus one fifty that is ten nineteen. We have to factor of safety into one point five. We can get the twenty eight point five kilometer. So again we have to two rails. So uh, to have to substitute this total rail and by by two we can get the fourteen point two five lateral force. Okay, already we can calculate that the one sixty eight point one two for the vertical load we have the bending moment is three sixty three kilonewton per meter. Okay, for vertical load the bending moment is this. For horizontal load that is horizontal force what is the bending moment? So this is simply for the uh, calculation into x into y we can get the bending moment in the lateral bending moment direction. Okay, so after calculation of this lateral bending moment in the long term direction and lateral direction that is m z and m y. Next we have to find the Maximum shear force. The maximum shear force condition already I was discussed in the previous classes. That is, the maximum shear force is obtained by the whenever we find the maximum shear force is obtained when the uh, total crane cutter is provided at the at the support of the at the uh, column support. So then when we can get the maximum shear force. But for maximum bend moment, we have to place the crane cutter at the center. Okay. Already which are discussed in the previous class. We'll go to the one uh, one time. Okay, so for this maximum shear force, we have to place the uh, point loads at the uh, at the support only. So therefore, so place this point loads at the this point in system. So now taking the moment over C is equal zero, and so take uh, and also you can take the moment over D is equal zero, which are use you can use it. So but I am not clearly explaining. But here the mention that uh, moment over C is equal zero force into perpendicular distance. So there is a not a perpendicular distance at C. So therefore R C into zero and R C force into perpendicular distance. This is clockwise direction. Therefore, this is positive. This is anti-clockwise direction. This is negative. So this is uh, at the point load. There is a uh, no distance. Therefore, it is zero. For this point load, there is a point uh, perpendicular distance from the C is three meters. With this value, R D we can calculate and R C we can calculate it to sixty four point. So out of this, we can th uh, take the maximum value. For only for bending moment, we have to find the bending moment to force into perpendicular distance. We can find the maximum value. But for the wheel load and shear force, we can take the maximum load. Uh, maximum reaction is the uh, shear force. Okay, therefore R C is the maximum uh, reaction. So therefore take this value. So to sixty four, this this is the dead load due to live load of the shear force due to the live load. The, the, this is shear force due to live load. Again, we have to find the shear force due to dead load and shear force due to impact. So the shear force due to impact actually, if you, uh, if you find the first uh, dead load after live load and impact, so this is the step. Okay, for shear force due to live load is the this is this is the shear force due to live load and shear force due to impact is twenty five percent of the shear force due to live load. So the shear force due to is the twenty five percent of the shear force due to Live load. So therefore, so therefore, twenty-five percent of the live load due to this is a electrical operated. Are they 
uh, otherwise if we manual operated coin this is there is a 10% so 10% 25% of the so if due to the live load so live load share force we have to take in into this value so 264.19 into this so this is due to 642 impact so some of the test book some of the persons are not taken the this share for duty impact but actually for the gantry gutter we have to add this value also this is the most important some of the members or some of the test books which may left in, in the problem so but we have to add this value also after finding of the shear for duty impact we have to find the shear for due to dead load so the shear for due to dead load is double l by 2 so already you know that the shear for due to dead load is double l by 2 so therefore the w is 3.45 and the length of the gantry gutter is 7 meters and by 2 we can find the pelling gutter so this is the total shear force maximum shear force is shear for due to live load shear for due to impact shear for due to dead load so shear for due to impact is 25% of the live load so shear for due to is 25% of the Live load. Okay, so this is the this is available in the code book. Okay, IS 875 part two. Okay, with this we can find the maximum shear force is 342 kilo. This is the shear force is long tunnel shear force. Okay, this is the shear force is long tunnel shear force. We have to find the lateral shear force also. Okay, for 168.12 vertical load we have shear force is 264.19. For the 44 14.25 lateral shear force, what is the shear force? So 14.25 into 64.19 into uh, x into 168.12. We can find the lateral shear force. We can find the okay. So this is the process for the lateral shear force and long tunnel shear force. After this finding of this, we have to go, next go to the steps of the next to plastic section modulus requirement. So the plastic section modulus requirement actually. Uh, Code big uh, suggests that the maximum depth of the gantry gutter is limited to uh, uh, length of the gutter by its twelve. Okay, so therefore uh, length of the gutter is seven thousand by twelve. So up to we can find the uh, more than this value is more than six hundred. So uh, the whatever the gantry uh, gantry gutter depth we have to maximum we can take the six hundred. Uh, uh, and the width ratio is one by forty to one thirty, or maybe sometimes so, uh, some of the members who are taking one by twenty fifth of this band. So with this value, we can find the uh, highest value of this above this values. We can find the two fifty. So with this next section, we can find the uh, uh, with the this uh, depth, we can choose the section. Okay, with this the with uh, this is the depth. Uh, whatever the section we have to take up to uh, the six six hundred mm depth of a section. So first we have to find the plastic section modulus requirement. So the plastic section modulus requirement for the Uh, design of beams we have the formula so that is beta b and z b but this is for the laterally supported beams but for the laterally unsupported beam what we done so for in order to contract the laterally unsupported we have to add the 30 to 40 percent of the plastic section modulus requirement so the, that's why we are adding so 40 percent to the uh, plastic section modulus requirement for the laterally supported beams so therefore 1.5 into md into f the formula is obtained from the this formula also which are also available in code book and this step also the whatever the class which are available in the in the design steps of the this material or in the or go to the previous okay so 1.4 into md so with this value md already we have find out in the bending moment in the uh, long tunnel bending moment is 474.99 so 474.474.98 so this is the bending moment so Must to remember the, uh, this value. Bend moment due to long tunnel bend moment is 474.88. Wheel load is 168.12. So maximum shear force is 342 kilonewtons. And uh, M by value is uh, lateral bend moment 30.68. And uh, lateral shear force is 20.3. So these these four values must be uh, remember uh, noted. Please note. So because uh, I am not uh, back to the material. Okay, so for this, so with this plastic section modulus requirement, we have to choose the the best section for the with the combination of a, uh, a beam and channel section. That means I section and channel section. So uh, for the plastic section modulus requirement, I have the material, I have the code book. So whatever the suggestion that we have to take only six hundred. Okay, so the depth of the section we have to take only six hundred. But we have the Uh, whatever the plastic six modulus requirement is, we have obtained the required plastic six modulus requirement is two six five nine. This is the two six five nine. But in the code book we have the this is the two six five nine, which is higher than the value. But in order to contract the biaxial bending and also due to the laterally unsupported, we have to take the uh, maximum value. So because of the after uh, if you select this uh, IS MB six hundred. 
you can definitely maximum i think maximum you can get the uh, uh, check for moment capacity is not getten so we have to take the next section so this is number of times repetition of the process we have to justly we can take the highest value of this iswb or iswb uh, maybe 133.7 or 145.7 so i am taking as a 133.7 as a process shift modulus requirement you can also take in for this i 122.6 but you can get uh, i think maximum you can get the uh, for moment capacity is failure so that's why you can find the next value so but i am taking directly so 133.7 so that is the section i have taken so 133.7 is the i am choosing section and with the channel section is ismc so the properties what are the properties we are taken from the uh, steel tables of the uh, rs agarwal or maybe you can take the so the uh, various values or parameters are obtained in the code book we have to note the all values the cyy is the center distance of the channel section cyy is the center distance of the channel section so this is the center of this this channel section is 23.6 mm okay all over the whatever the iz and iy but you can observe this uh, in this problem so whatever the the channel section we are placing the channel section as a uh, in the in this direction so whatever the iz value will be iy and iy will be the iz because of the actually we generally iz will be the in this direction but we are providing this channel in the in this direction so that's why iy will be the iz and iz will be the iy okay this is the values which i remember for the problem so okay here are the uh, um, i section will be this and uh, um, channel section is this so after the uh, choosing of the section next step is we have to find the section classification so section classification is b by t f value and d by t w value so with this value uh, we can find the uh, the, the section is uh, the chosen section is a plastic or compact or uh, semi uh, semi compact so with this value b will be b f by 2 so with this values you can find the section is a plastic value and for the channel section this is the value b will be b f minus t w thickness of the web we have to remove so with this value we can find the and all conditions the the section is a plastic section so for the plastic section the beta b value we can take directly taken as a one after the section classification we have to go to the next step is if we, we have to find the uh, whatever the check for moment capacity that is m, uh, beta b into zpz by fi by gamma m but we have to find the zpz and zdz for this zpz and that means the, for the calculation of the elastic section modulus and plastic section modulus we have to find the first initially we have to find the y bar the y bar is the neutral axis this is the distance from the neutral axis some test books some authors which are taken the neutral axis from the top to the na neutral axis some test books may authors taken the bottom to the neutral axis so i am taking the clearly from the top to neutral axis so that's why the values may be varying okay so there for y axis y bar is the a1 by 1 plus a2 y2 by a1 plus a2 so we are taking y bar only because this is the, this section is symmetrical about y axis so uh, y axis so x bar is equal to 0 and so we are in the z direction this is not symmetrical about so therefore we can taken only y bar only so therefore y bar is equal to a1 by 1 plus a2 y2 by a1 plus a2 so a1 is the area of the i section and a2 4 5 6 for the area of the channel section and y1 will be the if you observe so y1 and y2 is the 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 distance from the neutral axis to the the whatever the section of the neutral axis to the top okay this is the uh, this neutral axis for the 600 is 300 so 300 plus this the up to this point is 7.6 therefore 300 plus 7.6 therefore 7.6 therefore 3 7.6 for the channel section from this uh, top to the neutral axis to the channel section is itself cyy that is 23.6 so therefore a1 by 1 plus a2 by 2 then we can find the i bar so y bar so this is the y bar so in order to find the elastic section modulus we have to find the y bar so we, we are calculating the y bar now we have to find the i bar so i bar is the i, I section uh, z, uh, along the cross section of the i beam and channel section so the cross section due to iz b iz plus a h square iz is uh, the channel of the i section so that is 16 which are also noted in the uh, in the, uh, the last page so next one we have to iz plus a into area of the channel section into h square h is the uh, distance from the uh, distance from the neutral axis to the center of the uh, neutral axis okay the whatever the distance is that is the h so that is will uh, h okay next one 
for the channel section so ij plus a into h square h square is the nodal axis distance to the uh, individual nodal axis therefore you can get the ij same same wise we can find the iyy also iy grass is the iy beam plus iy channel so iy is the same but here the h distance is zero because in the h direction there is no h therefore generally the a into zero therefore only for the ib uh, iyy will be the iyy only so therefore iyy for the total this this iyy cross section is the total of the compound section that is so 4702 of the okay this is the uh, this is the channel section but is the iz but okay remember okay this is the channel section that is, that is 6302 so therefore we can uh, totally combined we can calculate, uh, calculate the iyy but also for the only for the top compression flange For the top compression flange, that is the I Y will be the B D Q by twelve plus the uh, channel section. Okay, sorry, I section. So I B D Q by twelve plus the uh, channel section. So that is six three six two point six. One second. So six three six two point six. That is the six three six two point. This is the channel section I Y, and for the channel uh, I section of the uh, is B D Q by twelve. So only for the this is I Y will be the. This I Y is the for the top compression flange only. Okay, for the top compression flange, that is the B D Q by twelve plus. This is the for the top compression flange will be the I of the. This is nine one three six point zero into ten power four. Okay, after calculation of the I J Z grass, I Y Y grass, and I Y of the top compression flange only, then we will we will get the nine one three six double one zero six five double one two seven. So this value. After the calculation of the I Z, we can find the uh, elastic section modulus. That is the I Z by Y, okay. I Z by Y. I Y is the I Y is the uh, uh, I Y will I uh, is the uh, highest to uh, neutral axis distance to the point. So therefore, that is the three hundred plus seven point six minus two forty seven point five. If you observe this, this is the lowest value Y bar. If we take this is the highest value. So three sixty point zero one is the maximum value. So therefore, this is the Three sixty point zero one will be get the maximum uh, highest to compression flange. So this with this value we can find the ZEZ. Okay, this value also most important. We have to remember this all time. So three thirteen point one eight. And also with respect to the uh, total grass section of the uh, uh, ZEZ will be the uh, will be the uh, uh, half of the its compression flange. Okay, that is the three hundred by two. That is one fifty. Okay, so that is one fifty. Okay, this will be the ZEZ and ZEZ by. Okay. After the calculation of the uh, and we have to find also the J D Y for the only for the top compression flange also. That is I Y by X max. Same. This is also same. The whatever the I Y value for the top compression flange by divided by its maximum X bar distance. So that is the uh, extreme fiber distance. That is the one fifty. So three hundred by two one fifty. We can get the J D Y for the top compression flange and uh, overall compression overall flange of the Y section. Okay. After calculation of the, this, we can find the after uh, finding of the elastic section model, we have to find the plastic section model. So, for in order to find the plastic section model, we have mainly three methods. The first one is the simplest method because the cantilever problem it can take almost one hour. So, in order to counteract the uh, saving of the time, we can simply by using the shape factor process, we can easily calculate the plastic section model. That is the plastic section model. The plastic section model is, is is equal to the shear factor is equal to plastic section model by elastic section model. From we can find the plastic section model is by shear factor into elastic section model. Already we are take uh, we are finding of the elastic section model, but we have to take in the shear factor. So for the shear factor for the major axis is we can generally we can take oh, 1.3 to 1.5. Uh, generally for I section that is 1.4 and uh, this value. And for minor axis it may, may vary from 1.2 to 1.4. So uh, For this problem, I have taken 1.49 and 1.35. So with this value, we can easily, very simply, we can find the plastic section model is 1.49 into elastic section model. We can find the uh, plastic section model is that is 4686 into 4.50. And for the plastic section model, for the uh, only for the uh, grass of the compression flange, and for the uh, next to for the total uh, y value. Okay, this for the plastic section model for the grass of the member will be the 822.24. This is the plastic section model, and above this value, above these values are elastic section models. Okay, so this is the values which are taken into the uh, next. Two. Okay, so plastic section model is for the only top compression flange only. This plastic section model is only for the top compression flange. So that is this is. 
these both are related to this value okay this value will be useful for the for next time okay that is for biaxial bending we have to finding in the next previous class but for the elastic sex models we have the plastic sex models for the for the top compression flange of the elastic sex models the plastic sex models will be the 822.24 okay for accurate method for plastic six models in this material i was clearly mentioned so each and individual axis for the plastic six model first we have to find the equal area axis okay equal area axis that means the totally this is the total built up section the equal area axis may be uh, up to very nearer to the top compression plane so we are the distance may i am taking from this to this is x bar okay not to this or not to this from the x bar is i am taking only from this to this okay with this value i will calculate the x bar or you may be taken as the x bar as from this from here to here or may be taken from here to here so this is the simplest method which are also available in the uh, at the bottom of the material i will also or uh, the next page so with this value we can find the first we have to find the plastic section models in accurate method we have to find the equal area axis after calculation of the equal area so first we have to find the plastic section model above equal area axis and below equal area axis so for above equal area axis so i have clearly mentioned in this uh, that is a uh, above equal area axis we have different to four parts that is only top compression one without to uh, without to uh, flange so with flange okay with the flange and uh, without to uh, uh, web and uh, with web so this four elements uh, above the plastic sex models is available so with this hatched portions is the represents this area into h and also in this also a hatched portion is represent this uh, area into h so uh, like this way you can find the equal plastic sex models above equal area axis is this one and the zpj plastic sex models requirement is below equal area axis we only we have only one web section and one a flange section so that is so with this value we can find the zpj below equal area axis so we can find the total plastic section models is above equal area axis and plus below equal area axis so combined we can find the so we can find the uh, zpj after calculation of the zpj we can find the zpy okay so zpy for only for the top compression flange only for the top compression flange we have first we have to take in the uh, i section of the flange portion only okay i only top compression flange is only up to this point only okay first we have to take in uh, any thing you can take in first i am taking only the here top compression of the i section and uh, without in this problem in this step without say, taking of the webs we are taking the compression flange uh, that is a flange section and that means it is related to web section and next we have to take in the only the flange section so with this we can we find the plastic section modulus Uh, in the y direction of the top compression flange only okay top compression flange so you can get the same value approximately same values the what this is the accurate method okay this is the accurate method we are also having uh, another method also medium method which is also available in this material so just go to this well uh, i will uh, so this is uh, more than time taking so just i am taking only not explaining in this uh, uh, in this uh, lecture just you can go through this video you can idea uh, first you can take the screenshots okay here you can take screenshot okay here you can take a screenshot okay here you can take a screenshot so with this you can uh, Uh, with the with this also we can find the maximum plastic section models okay next we have to find the check for moment capacity okay so check for moment capacity we have to find the in the next steps okay 